I hate losing in World of Tanks and I'm sure if you've ever played World of Tanks you hate losing as well and so today's video we're going to showcase how you can still win when you do lose within the game so let's take a look at a couple of gameplays as to how you can go about doing this because obviously even when you lose it's bound to happen at some point and if you can maximize what you're doing in that game you can feel like you haven't really lost even though you have anyway First things first, we are playing in the Defender and we are on Westfield. Probably not the nicest and most favourable map for the Defender since it doesn't really get much gun depression. You've also pretty mediocre in terms of the speed. You can't go super, super fast. It's no slow, slow heavy, uh, but it definitely isn't one that's able to really manoeuvre around the map like a medium tank. Um, however, with this map, what we need to do is go to the heavy corner, the key position on the map is to make sure that you are going up to where you see those light tanks straight ahead of us uh, and so if we can get there it's going to be able to get a couple of early shots hopefully at the beginning of the game obviously what we need to do is make sure that we have an impact as soon as possible within the game now you know we don't know whether this game is going to be a loss at this point in time but what we can do is make sure that we're giving ourselves the best chance because everyone wants to win sometimes you may have a team that just literally collapses and there's absolutely nothing regardless of what you do that you can do to win however in those games we can definitely maximize what we're doing and so you don't lose out on things like marks of excellence if you're going for them and obviously you want to feel like you've actually had a part in the game rather than just maybe getting one shot or something like that of damage so that's what we're going to aim to do now defender what are the key things of the tank well that's what you need to know for the tank that you're going to be playing in particular what are the strengths and weaknesses because if we're in the defender and we're going off to try and spot obviously it's not going to work very well so make sure that you are actually using your tank in the correct position don't just go somewhere uh, that you feel like you have to in your tank make sure that it is genuinely a good position for the tank that you're in because I find a lot of the time with these loss games is that people still take their tank to the wrong position and that's going to uh, really end up negatively impacting your game and you don't want to do that within uh, World of Tanks that's for sure. Obviously with these kinds of games as well if you notice that your team are lemming training down one side of the map and you're the one that's going to then try and hold off a, a flank against eight or nine people just don't just don't bother it's not even worth it even if it is the best position in the game for you if you're trying to hold off eight people it isn't the best position for you in the game it might be uh, the most favorable position for your tank class but yeah think about it situationally think about the game in hand and think about whether or not you should actually progress now within this game it's not actually looking too bad however we have lost the entire right hand flank of the map and that's kind of where you do need a good kind of distribution of teammates where you don't just have all of your team going up one side and all of your team uh, avoiding the other side and that's what we've kind of ended up doing and unfortunately for us uh, it hasn't looked like it's uh, gone particularly amazing you know it's fairly close we're 10 to 9 but we don't know how much hit points everyone has on both sides of the team and that's something I hope Wargaming bring in in a, a later date but in this sort of game what do we do well we could push down to the right but obviously being that we've noticed that the entire team have fallen on the right hand side of the flank near our base the last thing that you want to be doing is getting capped out at the to basically lose the game and uh, prohibit what you can do within the game and so we're going to start already moving back and if we can get up uh, to this sort of spot we're going to be able to spot anyone that might be trying to move across the field because someone could have done that uh, and so it's all about just making sure that you are putting yourself in a position that basically supports your team in the best way possible because even if your team are going to all get taken out anyway if you can prolong that you can basically support your team that will basically mean that you'll have longer to be able to deal with opponents and so you can get more damage and you can get more assistance and if all of your team are taken out then you're not going to be able to get any more assistance even if you do lose the game uh, regardless so it's all about just prolonging as much as possible to be able to have those good games and making sure that you put yourself in the right position even if you know that you're going to lose 
And often it's actually very easy to know when you're going to lose because you can see it pretty much straight away. If you look down in the bottom right hand corner, you see that big map that pretty much tells you what's going on in the game. And so, yeah, it's very easy to actually understand what's going on. If an entire team has left one flank and there's no one over there, there's none of your team over in a specific area, but there's still seven tanks left alive, like you can see in this game. Well, that indicates to me, at least personally, that there's going to be seven tanks over this side of the map because if they weren't, they'd have got spotted behind us. They're not able to be behind us because no one spotted them. And so, yes, making sure that you do do that is something you want to do. Obviously, in this game, we did snapshot the Centennial there, getting pretty lucky, uh, but we need to keep moving to keep trying to go over to the right. And yes, I have absolutely potatoed here and decided that I'm going to then get stuck on the bridge and now it's a teeter with death so oh god have I just taken myself out of the game this is definitely not something you want to be doing uh, in your games if you're trying to avoid getting uh, your game removed and trying to help yourself out but we're off of that now we can prove and progress definitely don't go doing that but anyway 2400 damage that's pretty it's, it's an okay game in the Defender, but in this sort of scenario where we've got plenty of tanks left alive on the enemy team and we've got a little bit of support from our team over this side, maybe we can pull out a couple hundred or maybe even a couple thousand more damage within this game, and that's what you need to be thinking in all of your games. Don't just think, oh, well, I've had a good game. That means I can just YOLO in and I'm going to make a silly play. Try and at least focus on trying to win the game even when you know you're almost likely going to lose because if you're super tryharding against opponents that might just think it's an easy win because there's six tanks and there's four on your team then yeah you're going to have a much better position to be able to do that. Obviously we knew that there's going to be people over here but what we wanted to do is get into this position obviously knowing we may or may not get spotted we may take a hit but considering it's basically one hit from a type 59 it's not that much of a problem and we were on full health now if i can get over here i can spot for my teammates and that's going to enable me to get at least a little bit of assistance if possible i may not get assistance i may get assistance this is the sort of thing you need to be taking into account is that at the very end of the game when it's all kind of coming to a close that's the point at which you can really uh, maximize your game because those couple of extra shots or that extra assistance damage that you might have been able to get that's really going to make or break your game and you can see here just from that one maneuver where we've moved over here we've got an extra 400 assistance damage we picked up an extra 470 damage as well and so yeah it's pretty nice in terms of that now obviously we have six enemy tanks left alive. We've got one teammate and right next to us. We've got another teammate somewhere on the map, and I think they may have be out of our signal range, which is unfortunate. Um, or they're actually just on top of each other, even sorry. And we have the artillery, so it's basically six v three. Not good at the end of the game, especially when a lot of the tanks that we've seen are on full health, and when there's light tanks coming. Uh, yeah, not something that's always good. Anyway. With this, what can we do? Well, we've got a Type 59 on full health. He's never going to be able to pen us if we're just showing our turret. Uh, so we can just kind of sit here. We can just wait it out and see what happens. Obviously, in this game, you know, we could have made a super aggressive play. Uh, but I'm not willing to just lose all of my hit points for the sake of maybe getting one extra shot. Maybe we could get one extra shot. Maybe we could get two. Maybe we could even get three if we manage to kind of hold out in this position. And this is what I'm thinking. I already know that we've probably lost the game so yeah there's no point in me throwing all of my hit points straight away let's make it tough for the opponents to actually take us out and you can see right here 3184 what am I thinking well the type 59 knows that I've just shot the scorpion G so he's probably going to be moving around am I right yes of course I am the type 59 is now moving forward what can we do here well we don't want to fully expose ourselves to the left hand side because we don't know what's over there uh, but we try and snap a shot into the type 59 we're going to have light tanks now coming up from behind us which we need to be kind of careful of and then the type 59 what we're going to now do is come right up to the side we know that the light tanks already gotten around us no point turning for him yet uh, we're going to then try and get a bit of ram damage but we don't manage to on the type 59-2 you can see here i'm angling my back if you angle your back in a heavy tank you're going to be able to at least have a chance at bouncing rounds because people when they're auto aiming which they often do if they're a light tank aren't going to be able to hit you so we're going to snap onto that guy get him out of the game it means one less gun fighting us 
Dragon is the biggest problem probably for us because yeah he's probably not going to be able to bounce and now we'll just go for the light tank get one more shot into him we'll just then kind of try and move around try and angle our armor to as many people as possible but when you do have three or four tanks surrounding you there's only so much you can do but we still managed to pick out from that point where we had 2800 damage an extra 1300 so that's three shots and that's all about just thinking about what you're going to do uh, and moving around the map i'm not saying it's the best game it's probably not the best display of how i could have potentially won the game in the most fashionable way possible but we still managed to really pull out the game uh, from the clutches of having a mediocre game to one of the better games that you can have in a tier 8 tank Number two for today is playing in the Barask, one of my favourite and most flexible tanks that I think is in World of Tanks. So if you're interested in a premium that is just utterly unbelievable, really, really great, has everything that you'll need, the Barask is one of those. And I'm sure if you watch any World of Tanks PC videos, you know exactly what I'm on about. Uh, so this tank is just really, really good. And it is really flexible. It allows you to really help out your team and get damage at the end of the game because what you can do is just be a little sneaky. Uh, kind of tank and you can move around the map you can really annoy your opponents when they're trying to find where you are at the end of the game if you are in that losing scenario and this is a brilliant example of what we can do uh, in that scenario now at the beginning of the game obviously we don't know that we're going to lose as with every game that you play you never know if you're going to win or lose um, well depending on where your team go maybe in the first couple of minutes you do know but in this position what we can do uh, is we can get some early spotting damage on them and from this point I just think well well we might as well get 700 damage out of it so we put a couple rounds quick succession into the tiger p who's probably regretting his life decision as now we are getting assistance damage and we've obviously taken the majority of his hit points away as well obviously now we see that there are a lot of opponents around here so what we'll do is just you know take it very easy we don't need to necessarily get spotted and you can see there i am pinpointing the tracks of the is because in these games where you never know whether you're going to win or lose or the way that you can win is by getting assistance damage as well because if you can aim for tracks and you have the possibility of dealing damage and tracking them that is what you should be doing don't get lazy don't just aim for the damage uh, aim for the damage and the track as well uh, unless of course you can take the tank out from full health uh, of course what we're doing here is making sure that we aren't getting spotted we're staying well behind the bushes which is something that you want to be doing in your sneaky tanks obviously last replay you can't really do that in a heavy tank but in something like the Barask or any light tank or even potentially medium tanks that have fairly okay camo not talking about probably one of the chunky medium tanks that don't have armor that's probably not going to work for you uh, but yeah definitely what you can do is use the camouflage of your tank to your advantage in these games. It's 11 to 10 now and you can probably notice that actually the enemy team are kind of predominantly focused on the southern side of the map and they've kind of started winning. Now 11 to 10 very very close doesn't necessarily mean instantaneously to me that we're going to lose uh, but it certainly indicates that we have to do something within this game to uh, pull it out and making sure that we can get early damage in these games is essential to making sure that by the end of it if we do have a one-sided loss that we can actually still have a decent game and maybe not go down on our marks of excellence if that's what you're aiming to do or if you're just trying to increase the chances of winning obviously it works in the same regard now 2850 damage at the beginning of the game is very very good we're not going to complain at that also a little bit of assistance nothing massive uh, but now we need to push within this game because as we talked about if they win the southern side of the map very quickly they're going to then end up pushing us into a bit of a sausage sandwich like we talked about and yeah you definitely don't want a sausage sandwich within world of tanks we put one round into the vanguard another one and then we ram him and i was hoping that i'd have actually done a lot more damage against the van elc so we lost actually a lot of hit points there which we probably didn't need to do if i just poked up and put two shots so that's something that you need to think about obviously you know in the scenarios you're thinking well i need to just get that damage get it out and then reload and then help 
help my team as possible as much as possible and if we can do that we'll get some more damage and yeah sometimes you do have to take damage in some regards to get more damage in the late game because if you don't take out tanks early enough then they can actually come around and bite you in the backside so there's always that but Obviously Centurion from the back, no worries there, and we've picked up another 700 damage nearly, um, which is always good, up to 3,500 I believe, well 3.4 thousand and 387 assistants. Very good game for the Barask, certainly one of the better ones that you can expect, and by saying 3.4 is actually 4,000, and we'll put a nice round into the T-34 ATE-8 another one there and unfortunately for us this AMX is pushing us out which is something that we actually got fairly lucky not to take a hit there uh, but we really shouldn't have taken one if he'd actually just not driven straight into the back of us and stopped us from actually reversing. Obviously 500 assistance damage as well we're spotting for our team but at this point I know we have lost the game there's no way that I'm going to be able to stop any of them especially when I'm on reload and so what I'm thinking now is try and get as much distance between me and the opponents as quickly as possible so that I can get a bit of assistance or at least help out this AMX as much as possible and you can see me moving over to the right hand side of the map to be able to do that at least hopefully I'm going to try and get into this bush area to at least provide some cover but unfortunately we get spotted and it is indeed the fatherland over there who has done so now 400 base xp uh, or at least plus onto this game means that yes it's a very good game uh, and you can tell that how well your game's kind of going by that xp counter in the top right once you deal any kind of assistance and the only way of winning within this game is hopefully capping before they manage to get here but it's very unlikely and i already know that that's probably not the case or it's not going to be the case and we can see that when they do finally track us and reset the cap and now it's time to get a move on and try and get out of here and if we can get some side shots onto anyone else like the VK here who is moving up then we're going to be able to get some more damage and that's going to help us out on our marks of excellence uh, which is always something that I am kind of keen on doing if that's what I'm going for uh, or alternatively just having a good replay to put on YouTube uh, and yeah we do manage to get one more shot into the VK unfortunately not managing to get another one but from the kind of clutches of despair and knowing that we're probably going to lose the game we still managed to pick up a couple more extra shots and have a good game in the end and although we did lose I'm not really going to count that as a loss because to me five and a half thousand assistance and damage combined is certainly a very very good game for the Barask and I felt like I tried my best and yes we made a few mistakes but there we go I couldn't really help out my team much more than what we did and certainly went above and beyond what you typically do in a Barask in the tier 8 matchup but there you go hopefully this video showcases at least in your mentality that you should be thinking about if you know that your team are going to lose at the end of the game and thinking about how you can maximize your losses so that you don't feel like you've actually lost within the world of tanks other than that I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and you join me in the next video Goodbye.